And I was laughing, like, if anything, they should want me to be on the panel. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people, like, there's successful artists that ask me information about indie. Like, so, but, so, it's just so much politics that I always feel like I'm never going to get my due. And I would say, yeah. what would you like your, uh, we was talking about legacy, what would you like your legacy to be after it's all said and done? What would you like to be known for? I mean, I just want my legacy to be, I want it to be something that's true. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to sit here and candy coat it and act and say I want a, 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 a statue in front of Madison Square Garden or something. I just want to be recognized for whatever, whatever I deserve. Whatever I earn, I feel like that's what I should be given. That's all. All I want is what I earn. Like, if I was a good artist, or if I was if I was amongst the best lyricists, or if they think I was one of the best lyricists, or if they think I was a decent lyricist, let it be known. Or, or you know, mega, you know, so over 300,000 independently with no major. Like, there's dudes on majors that, that don't even sell 100,000. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like there's so many things that I've done as an artist that they never speak on. And then when somebody else does one-fourth of what I did, they get a, a parade. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, it's just, I just, just, just give me my pat on the back. That's all. I, I don't want nothing special. Just give me my pat on the back. But don't act like I was just a one of a, you know, one in the, how to say, a dime a dozen. Yeah, that's what's up. I would say, and also, like, I can just tell in your music that you're a very intelligent guy person so I just want to know about some of the uh, like couple of the life changing books you read I know you read a lot of books and stuff honestly I haven't even read that many books lately but the books that that, uh, that have been symbolic in me I'm going to tell you a funny story when I was younger one of the books that helped me develop my vocabulary Mm -hmm. is comic books Mm. I used to be an avid X-Men reader. And if you read comic books and you look at some of the words in there, or you, especially if you look at the older ones, you'd be like, wow, like, what, like, this isn't for a kid. Like, there's certain words in the, that was in the comic books that I used to have to go to the dictionary, find out what that word means, and then I'll be blown away like, wow, that's cool. And then I'll add that to my lyrics or something. So I used to be an avid comic reader. And then when I was incarcerated, I was in the box. And in a box, you're just locked in like an animal. You can't even move. You get maybe one hour of record day. Um, you know, no TV, none of that. So all you could do is read. So one of the books that that that, that really stuck to me during that time was uh, the autobiography of Michael X. Mm-hmm. Like, that really changed me. And it made me... I think that book is like... Um, that should be mandatory reading for minorities because that book made you makes you realize that you can accomplish something even when you're at your lowest like when you're in jail or when you're from the ghetto you have a ideology sometimes that that's all you can be or that's all you ever will be and there are people that are quick to tell you that especially people that are not from there like I've had COs correction officers tell me you fucking inmate like in the way they use the word inmate it's like so derogatory and it's like a, a mental stain on you. Like, you know, it actually polarizes some people, fucks them up to the point where they believe I can't do nothing when I come home. I've had inmates tell me, yo, ain't, ain't nobody gonna hire for me for no job when I come home. There's nothing that I could do with my life. Like, they, that's what they told me about themselves. They believe that hype. So, reading the Malcolm X book, I read about this guy who was a street hustler, who was a pimp, who went to jail, he was living the fast life, he went to jail, he started reading the dictionary, you know, he became an avid reader, you know, he found religion, he found discipline, and uh, he educated himself, he he got his education, so that motivated me to go, you know, I went and got my GED while while I was incarcerated, and after I got my GED, I signed up for college classes, college courses, while I was incarcerated, so I came home smarter than when I went to jail. And that book was a big um, a part of that, you know. So that was that was one of the most symbolic books that I've read. That um, and then books of religion, you know, the Bible, the Quran, stuff like that. Also, I've read a book called Art of War before that had some real strong quotes in it too. And uh, those are some of the books.
things that, you know, that really, uh, that really stayed with me mentally. Of course, in jail, you're always going to have the Iceberg Slim and Don Gordon's books, too. There's always those for those, you know, those books. But I don't, I tried to stray away from those books. Because those books are, are, you know, those books, sometimes they tend to make people want to go back to that fast life. Yeah, I feel you. All right, so I want I want you to talk about your current projects a little bit because I saw the uh, you got the new group Mars coming out. So I want you to talk about what all you got going on. Well, Mars actually that, that was a big misconception. Mars is basically a song. Oh. The, the next project that we that I'm doing is is going to be a, a whole core mega project, but it's entirely produced by Lord Professor. You no, know, so that is like a dream come true for me to work with Lars Pro. So Law Professor is doing the beats and I'm doing the rhymes and Mars is just one of the songs that's on there. It's just that when we did Mars, like I came up with the, the idea for Mars because I always try to come up with titles that are stick catchy and I called it Mars because it was Mega, Action, Bronson, and Rock, Marciano, and Saigon. So, um, that's why I called it. Just like I did a song with Ghostface, I called it Tony Montana because people call me Mega Montana they call him Tony Stark. So Mars was a conceptual song it's just the buzz got so crazy that the pump and the public is so so thirsty for real hip hop <laughs> underground artists that when they seen us together, it's like they wanted that. And then the um and then after that I've had, you know, I the thought crossed my mind about it. And I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure it's crossed all of my mind, but the priority right now is my project and, and their projects. Whatever each one of those guys are doing, that's the that's the priority and, and it's large professor project is my priority now what's going to happen down the line i don't know that's not something that's you know that's really um on the agenda but that's what the public wanted you know right and um what advice would you give to uh, a person you know they just want to not necessarily successful in hip-hop but just successful in life uh what advice would you give them you want to be successful in life first part of being successful in life is appreciating life. Like, you know, like some people, um, see, when you don't respect, when you don't respect life, when you're not happy with yourself, then life becomes a drag. But when you, when you respect life, then you respect the beauty of it. You respect the people in, in, in life. And then you have to have, you have to have some, uh, you have to have a relationship with God. Like when something's not going your right your way, you can't be mad at the world. You know what I'm saying? You have because you got to think there's always going to be a better day. So my part, my my thing, my key to success is being honest. Try to be try to be as honest as you can, be as loyal as you can, and be and, and treat others as you would want those people to treat you. Like I've developed trust where where people there are people that are executives that will give me a credit card. Or, 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 or discuss confidential, you know, information around me. Or, you know, like I've developed that trust. And, and even as a street, even when I was in the street, there was dudes that left thousands upon thousands of dollars at my apartment when I lived in New York, in Queens. Like, yo, you know, like, yo, I'm going to leave this over here. Like, so so one thing, one proud thing I, I can say about myself is, is I'm a trustworthy guy. And that, and that makes me proud of myself in this day and age when it's hard to trust people. So... You know, to be successful in life, you have to be successful with yourself. Like, be a man, be a man or a woman of integrity, and 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 and, and put God in your life, man. And that's the first sign. You know, that's the first way to success. Mm-hmm. And be driven. Like, don't act like everybody owes you something. Be driven, man. The more focused you are, the more driven you are. The more determined you are to win. That's it. All right, and I want you to tell us about your uh, your biggest fan, who that person is, and why they're your biggest fan. To be honest, I don't even know who my biggest fan is. Like I said, like for years I've went around with like a chip on my shoulder, or like a I've been an underdog so long that now that I'm starting to get recognition, or people are calling me a legend and this and that, I don't really know how to take it. So I'm meeting people every. I've met people that have my quotes on tattoos on their body. So it's like, wow. Like, that blows me away. It's like, damn. Like, to think my words meant that much so person that they were tatted on their body. And this is more, I've met 
far more than one person with this. So I don't even know who my biggest fan is. You know, I'm, I, you know, but to be honest with you, I respect my biggest fan just like I respect my smallest fan. I, I love them all because without them, I wouldn't even be on the phone with you. Alright man, I appreciate you coming through politicking with me. I really appreciate it. No problem. I say you wanna uh tell them your websites and all that, how to hit you up? Go to Real Call Meg on Twitter, I'm finally verified. And also I have a website called legalhustle.net. It's up, it's running, it's been running for a while. I just wanna make it a little better, but I'm also there sometimes, so that's the places you can find me at. And I would say do you like far as like uh like indie producers and stuff like that, do you work with any any Indie producers or I work with I I work with I'm the type of person I work with any any producer I, as long as the beat is dope but not right now like at this moment like all my attention is on is on Lord Professor Beats that I have yeah, to finish yeah, 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 and so uh, as soon as I finish that and as soon as I finish that other because I'm working on two core mega albums right now the project I'm doing with Lord Professor I'm gonna be mega. And then that project that I'm doing after that, I'm going to be cool, man. I'm going to be back to myself. So it's like I'm working on two simultaneous projects. So it's not going to be no big break after this Law Professor of Core Mega Junk. It's going to be another Mega Junk, you know what I mean? So right now I'm, I'm overwhelmed with beats. So after that, I, I'll be more susceptible to working with, with um, producers. I would say, so what's the difference between Mega and Core Mega? Um, that's, that's, we are going to find that out shortly. I don't even know that yet. But after the Law Pro album comes out, I'll be able to really um, sit back and um, and measure the two. But I know from what I'm hearing, Mega is a little bit more deeper than Core Mega. Because at the end of the day, Core Mega did start out as a dealer. Core Mega did start out, uh, you know, going through an ignorant phase. I listened to some of my earlier music, and I'm like, I was ignorant. Like, I was intelligent, but I was ignorant. And... Uh, there's no ignorance in the mega project, you know? So it's just, there's no glorified streets. There's no glorified, dry, glorifying the drug game. You know, um, I have a song um, where I'm talking about what I what I don't like about the industry on there. I have songs where, I have a song with Nature, you know, who back in the days was my rival or yeah. who people put me up against because of the firm. Um, you know, um, and there's other songs, but the songs definitely have a all sophisticated, all grown tone to it, you know, so that's the difference, I guess. There's no ounce of, uh, ignorance in Mega, but Core Mega had his days of ignorance. What's up? This is Core Mega. I'm chilling with my people at Pole Politic, you know what I mean? Peace and love. Even the hardest robbers know I got desire and heart Like John Starks when the dunk had the garden wild and triumph was short lived but the moment's timeless Words hold way like a Simon, never break your silence If you face the diaper, take it like a man A thousand deaths is a lot of sweat Satan's fire rages like the 80s types of blazing souls Of those who say we came for science Ain't as wise as they like us to believe about it, what made us conscious? A greater power gave us all the gift of life. Be gracious for it before the creator called you witness in a great performance. I ain't conforming. I crushed those who wanted them. Way the powder of their persona on a high scale of rhyming. They've been counting a peak harder to reach the Himalayan mountains. People say I'm karma. I consider it evolving. I'm sick of facing charges and my mental game is stronger. As rain falls in my executive trench with the waist belt, base belt, make your face melt. Toast to fortune, diamonds in the coffin, pinky. Send it, get it twisted like a blender. Grown man rap, grown man pockets. Never catch a statutory, eat a catchatory. You're like a squinch, you peel when you see steel. Me, I squeeze it till it's empty, then I refill. We sit and play your shit rummy. Chips and hash like the rocket Gibraltar. Cop my pie support you. Gun metal with the rocket launcher. You're getting wet up when I pop it off. I got bitches making salsa sauce with their blouses off. Shorty shoot the gun soft like a mouse's cough. Five hundred dollars with it cost for an ounce of broth. Collect the paper then I'm bouncing off. It's me. As I master my crap rhymes made a heron. Head and all, lines on a high echelon. The fly epilogue, Gore-Tex, belt checkerboard, three hecklers. The sun gleam on my complexion, completion. 
eclectic and fleeces, expensive balls and